you know, we confuse democracy with legitimacy, right? There are, for most Afghans, it didn't need to be uh, fingers in purple ink. It didn't need to be one person, one vote. It just needed to be legitimate. And that might not be, you know, Taliban oppression, uh, but it just needs to be, okay, my, my jirga, my local council of elders have decided how the, the, the village as a whole is voting. And that kicks up to the, you know, the provincial guy. Uh, I mean, government uh, in Afghanistan probably naturally looks a lot more like something that we would consider feudalism than, you know, bureaucratic democracy. And we tried to make it that. We tried to force it that. And it was a misfit for the, for the environment. Um, we tried, that was a political decision. From a military decision, we took an, an army that only needed to fight and defeat, you know, uh, a local tribal militia, basically, at a national level in the Taliban, and tried to make it like us, an organization that exists to do expeditionary and very technical operations. How do you create a military that um, runs on American logistics and American supply and American maintenance when, you know, the overwhelming uh, population of your incoming recruits are illiterate? And that's it's just the way Afghan society is. There's not a requirement for it. So we're trying to build this system that's based on how our 18-year-old service members show up and transport, transport it over to there where it didn't work. Um, you know, we, we hindered, they're in a part of the country or part of the world rather where former Soviet equipment is very common. And for some reason, Afghan pilots were flying Blackhawks that they couldn't maintain and couldn't get parts for after we withdrew the logistics logistics for them. So there were plenty of structural problems, and I think many of them we, the United States, put on the Afghan government. The Afghan government itself, like I said, not being a very good partner, not not helping in any of that either. Uh, then leading up to it, we were so desperate uh, um, to get a deal with the Taliban that we basically just agreed to anything they demanded. And one of their demands was the Afghan government cannot be a part of these negotiations. So the Afghan government was sitting there just hearing the aftermath of what we'd agreed to with the Taliban uh, and having to deal with those considerations as we slowly but surely pulled the rug out from under them. 